So welcome, welcome. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm really excited today to talk about this point, which is what do we do when we don't know the answers to our clients' questions? This is actually one of the top fears and doubts that I hear from new health coaches. It's one of those fears and doubts that can actually stop them in their tracks and hold them back from moving forward even with their coaching practices because they are so worried about what could happen in this situation, what they are going to do. So I have a couple of um, sort of thoughts about this, typical things that I'm hearing from new coaches about what this might feel like. So, you know, maybe you're worried about what happens when my client asks me a question, I don't know the answer, you know, they're gonna feel like, I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know my stuff, that, you know, I'm a failure and a fraud. Uh, so that's the number one thing I hear. I also hear a lot of times new coaches saying, well, I just need to do more training first. I need to gain more knowledge, get for more information so that I will be able to answer all of my clients' questions. So that's a typical thing I hear. I also hear this, you know, I feel like a fraud, um, really don't know uh, enough yet to start coaching, so need to do more training, so, so that's a big one. I'm just not ready yet, don't know enough. And then there's also uh, a really, you know, th this big fear when it comes to the questions that we might get asked by our clients. The, the question is something like, well, you know, what if my client wants journals, research articles, proof of what I'm saying or suggesting or telling them. You know, that's a big fear. How do I back up my claims? How do I back up my recommendations and suggestions? So those are some of the typical things that I hear from uh, new coaches around this piece about having to have all the answers and, and answer our clients' questions. So if that sounds like you, if it sounds familiar, if you have any of those types of doubts or fears going through your mind, then you're absolutely in the right place and this, this mini training is definitely for you. So I can relate to these doubts and fears because I absolutely had them um, way back when I was doing my training and I launched my practice. Um, this was a big fear and doubt for me because I will admit that the science side of things is not my skill set. It's not an area of expertise for me. I've never really been good at that kind of thing. So when it came to things like nutrition, physiology, um, <clears throat> metabolic markers, um, what else, things like... Um, yeah, just nutrition, physiology, all that science side of nutrition, I felt totally out of my, you know, out of my zone of expertise. So I was so worried that I was going to get all those types of questions from my clients. And that really, really held me back. It made me feel like, probably like some of you are feeling like, I just need to go do more training. I need to become a naturopath or a nutritionist, or I just need to you know, find that research, gain all that knowledge so that I can feel confident and comfortable talking to my clients about some of these topics. So that's the number one reason why I can, why I can relate to how you might be feeling. The second reason is that because early on in my coaching, I actually, sort of my, my worst fears came true in that I got a client who was a medical doctor. So he was in his 50s, he was conventionally, traditionally trained physician, and during our first session he said to me, I'm really interested in the evidence-based and science-backed, you know, diet and lifestyle recommendations. And I thought, oh my goodness, like what have I gotten myself into? This is my worst nightmare. You know, he's a physician. He's going to be looking for me to have all, you know, not similar information to what he had, but, but more and different information, like as if I was a registered dietitian or something like that. So I was totally freaked out by that um, and felt like I just needed to go and do all kinds of research, have like, you know, medical journals and papers and there for him to support, you know, what I was doing. And way back then, when, when I started my practice, I was really, you know, in that expert authority mode. I felt like I needed to know it all. I felt like I needed 
needed to figure out a treatment plan um, for my clients and so I was definitely operating outside of my scope of practice and not really showing up very coach like so today now that I've um, you know really immersed myself in coaching principles behavioral change principles um, the stages of change all of that I, I know my zone of expertise and I'm not worried about that kind of thing anymore so those are my two points that I just wanted to share in terms of relating to how you might be feeling around this. And what I have now are um, four, four reminders for you. So I wanna share four reminders about some basic coaching principles that I think will really help, you know, if you just are able to embrace those and sink into them, they're gonna help alleviate some of that pressure, those fears and doubts, you know, around having to know it all and having to have all the answers. So I'm gonna share those with you first and then I've got five practical tips that I think will really help you sort of in the situation when you're feeling, you know, like I don't have the answer, when the client's asking questions that you might not know the answers to. So let's jump in. So number one reminder is that you know, these fears and doubts really creep in because you really want to help your clients, right? We want to help, we want to answer their questions, we want to give them what they need, we want to provide that value um, and, and have them feel that our coaching is worthwhile. So as we do that, sometimes we, you know, shift back into that authority, that expert. So we're taking on the responsibility for their outcomes, we're trying to fix and we're trying to solve. Um, so it's just a reminder that that's why we go to that place. You know, it's coming from a good place um, for sure. But, but the reminder here is that, and this is our basic coaching principle, I feel like I say it on every training that I do. I feel like a broken record on this one, but coaches believe and we hold that the client is naturally creative, resourceful and whole, and they have the answers inside of them. So if we're holding that, if we're coming from that place, we're not going to have to have all the answers, right? The client has the answers, the coach has the questions. So coming back to that place, I think can really, really help. Um, so what I'd say here as well is that, you know, we always say the client has the answers. And you may say, well, the client might not know or have the answer uh, inside of them about like, what's the nutrient breakdown of a carrot, for example? <laughs> what are the macronutrients in a carrot? They may ask you that. Well, they might not know the answer to that. We might not know the answer to that. But what we're gonna do is hold that they have the ability, the capability to figure that out, to find out that information. So this is so much more empowering when we can help them come up with their own answers, figure it out, find the information that they need, as opposed to us just telling them. So this is that basic principle. They have the answers. If they don't actually have the knowledge, the information inside of them, we're gonna help them figure out how to get that information, to get that knowledge. So that's the first reminder. The, cl the client is creative, resourceful, and whole, and has the answers inside of them. So my second reminder is that it's so, so important as a new coach, as any coach, to be able to explain what coaching is and what it isn't. I harp on this one all the time. We have to be able to explain the value proposition of coaching. How is coaching different from some of those other professions? Like a physician, like a registered dietitian, like a mental health practitioner, like a therapist. How are we different? Because if we can explain that and really share and help our client understand the value of coaching, they're not going to be looking to us for those answers because those aren't the things that we're going to provide them. We're coaches. We are going to coach them. We're going to facilitate a coaching process. We're not here as the experts and authority to be, you know, encyclopedias about nutrition. So that's the second reminder. Really, you know, if you do nothing else, really get good at understanding what coaching is and then being able to explain it to your clients. So reminder number three sort of follows along and picks up on that last point, and it's that we almost have to teach and educate and almost even train our clients to be clients. So most people are much more comfortable being patients, right? They go to doctors, they go to therapists, they're in that patient mode. So they understand that. 
a lot of times people don't really understand what coaching is, right? So you gotta be good at explaining it and they don't even really know to know how to show up as a client. So, you know, I think it's really, really important for us to be able to, um, you know, share with them and help explain to them how they can be good clients. So if you set up your, you know, the first session with a client or your health history, like it's a health consult, um, where you're going through symptoms and their medications, and they're telling you all about what's happening with their illness, um, then you're gonna probably jump right into fix mode. In your mind, you're gonna be thinking, I just need to figure out how to solve this for the client. What am I gonna do to solve this and fix it for them? So that is, is you're gonna be showing up in that expert mode, right? So I would really recommend instead showing up more from that client place. We're coaches, um, you know, we coach. So in your agreement even, I think it's important to explain the client responsibility. We explain, here's what I am as your coach, here's what I'm gonna do, but here's your role as client and here are all the things that you're responsible for because it's different than other therapeutic relationships, right? This is a partnership, it is a relationship. And so the client has responsibilities. They have a role to play in this. They're an equal partner. So being able to really explain and help your client show up like a client and be more of a client than a patient, I think is really gonna help um, them show up in that way and not be looking to you to answer all of those questions. So my reminder number four is, you know, when it comes to answering questions that, that your clients have, you're never gonna know it all, right? There's just way too much information out there. Um, you are not a nutrition encyclopedia, um, you know, so it's a never ending quest to actually learn all the information. That, that's an impossible task. You will never learn it all. So what I really recommend, instead of trying to, you know, learn all the different health areas and, and be a doctor without medical training, you know, and I'm not down on further training, absolutely get more training so that you will feel comfortable, but if you are interested in the coaching process and you wanna be, you know, a coach and go down the professional coaching road, then I think it's much more worthwhile to learn about the coaching process, the coaching mindset, methodologies, frameworks that coaches use, um, learn about the behavioral change process, learn stages of change, motivational interviewing, all of that is great to learn. Yes, become an expert in that, but you're never going to know it all. You're never going to be able to answer all of their questions. So um, I, I think instead of just feeling like I just need to do more training in order to get that more information, you know, learn what you really need to learn to be a good coach and then just get out there and start coaching. So those were my four reminders. Uh, now I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about some of these practical tips that I've adopted or learned you know, throughout my coaching career that really helped me um, you know, let go of those fears and doubts about the need to answer all the questions and have all those answers. So my first tip is it's absolutely okay to say you don't know. <laughs> Your client does not expect you to know it all. Um, it's okay to say, I don't know. Um, you may say something like, I don't have that information right now. You know, is it okay if I get back to you later? Or, you know, I'll follow up, follow up with you, you know, in an email or a text later in the week. I don't have that information right now. Absolutely okay. No one is ever going to fault you for just saying that you don't know. I personally think it's much better to be honest and let the person know that you don't know than try to sort of, you know, fudge your way through it or, or try to think of something to say it to sound, you know, smart and intelligent. It's, it's absolutely okay to say you don't know. Um, you'll get back to them later and like really what's the worst case scenario here? Um, that they think, oh, well, she didn't have the answer to that question. That's okay, she's gonna figure it out and she's gonna get back to me. Totally, uh, totally reasonable. So that's tip one, number one, it's okay to say you don't know the answer. Number two, and I really feel like this is a better and more effective and, and, and more coach-like strategy, is to really invite the client to do their own learning, their own exploration, and help them figure out how are they going to learn that information? How are they gonna gather the information that they need? Um, 
So, you know, how we could do that in a coach-like way, if the client asks a question about something we're not familiar with or something that they want to learn more about, we could say, well, number one, tell me, what do you know about that topic? You know, how much do you know? What do you know? So you can find that out. Then you could ask them, well, what are the gaps? What else do you need to learn about this topic? You know, where are the gaps in the information that you currently have? Um, and then you could ask, you know, how might you go about learning this information? What do you think you want to do to gather that information, to learn it, to gain that knowledge that you feel you need? Um, so those are some great coaching questions to ask. So what the client could do is come back and say, well, I want to learn that from you. You're my coach, so I'd love to learn that from you. And that's okay. If that's something that's within your scope of practice, that's within you know what you do know, absolutely we can share information with our clients. Under the national board guidelines, we can educate 25% of the time. So absolutely we can share information with our clients. If the client point blank asks us to share information, we could do that and we could what we do in a coach-like way is to give them a small amount of information, sort of one piece at a time. We really want to make sure that it's useful to them. We want to make sure that they're learning from that information and they're integrating it. So what are they doing with that information? How are they integrating that into their life? So absolutely, if the coach asks us for information, they want to learn something from us, it's in our scope of practice, then you can absolutely share information. Um, the other thing that may happen is maybe they don't just come right out and say, well, I want to learn from you, you know, coach, tell me. Um, what you could do is if you have that information, you could ask for permission to share that information with the client. Actually, I have a resource. I have a document. I have a website. I have a handout. Um, you know, do I have your permission to share that with you? Is that something you would like me to share with you? So if you ask for permission, absolutely, you can share that type of information. The other thing here is that perhaps you have other credentials, you have other trainings, other um, modalities, you know, that, that you are sharing with your clients. So you're wearing different hats. So you could say something like, well, I'm going to switch into my fitness trainer, you know, hat right now. And so I'll share that information. I'm going to switch into my nutritionist hat right now. And so from that perspective, I can share. So there are lots of ways that we can share information and educate our clients. We just want to do it in a coaching like way and we really always want to help the client do their own exploration and their own learning first before we just tell them and hand them the information because as we know from the research um, just providing education information only accounts for about 30 percent uh, of a success rate in terms of behavioral change outcomes and we know that the flip side is that coaching actually can get us to about 90% of a successful behavioral change outcome. Um, so that process is actually much more effective. So that was a long tip. Um, tip number two, which was to invite the client to get curious and do their own learning first. So tip number three that I have um, is that, you know, way back when, when I started, I was so worried about getting these nutrition questions and, you know, feeling like I didn't know my stuff, like I wasn't going to have the answers to my clients' questions, that my mentor, Dr. Arlowski, recommended that, and this has just been such a helpful tip for me over the years, he recommended that in the prep email that I send to my clients, so before our session, I'm confirming our session time, I'm asking them what they want to work on, I'm just doing that prep form. In that form, which is really just a little email, it's an email confirmation with my client, I would ask them, do you have any nutrition questions for me? So, you know, that was a way for me to know in advance what the client wanted to ask. I could do some research, I could come to the session with that information, and I wouldn't feel caught off guard. I would feel prepared, like I did have the answers, and then I could share that information with the client. So that was just something that was so, so helpful for me. So however you wanna frame that, you know, do you have any questions for me that you want me to address during our session, whether it's around nutrition or, you know, some other area maybe that, that you focus on, it's just really a great way to be, to be prepared, do your own research so that you don't feel caught off guard um, and that you can't answer those questions. So that was tip number three. Uh, tip number four is 
we really need to switch out of that patient expert mode. So I talked about that a little bit and switching into the coach mode. So instead of tell me your symptoms, tell me your medications, tell me all the, you know, health things that you're experiencing and I'm going to, you know, diagnose that, treat it, you know, and come up with a plan for you. Instead of that model, which is not coaching, we really want to adopt the coaching framework, which is all about um, here's where the client is today. I meet them where they are and I help move them to where they want to be in the future. So how I do that is really by understanding the current state. So what is their challenge? What, what are they stuck around? What are the obstacles? Um, so I explore that a little bit with the client and then I invite the client to look ahead to the future. What's your vision? Where do you see yourself? Where do you want to be? What's that big goal and intention you have for this area of health and well-being in your life? And then what we do is we help them move toward that future state by helping them work on some action planning, develop some accountabilities and support systems to put in place. So this model is the coaching model and it really helps um, what we want to do instead of just fix, treat, you know, provide a solution it, and rescue our clients is to allow them to go through a self exploration, a self learning journey where they are changing their lifestyle, their habits, their behaviors and their patterns. And that's kind of a very simplistic way of moving them through that coaching model. So that's, that's that tip number four, which is really, you know, let go of um, therapeutic model and patient, uh, expert and patient, and, and really adopt that coaching model I think is so, so important. And then my fifth practical tip, my last tip for today, is remember to refer out when it's out of scope. So whatever health coach training program you did, get clear on your scope of practice. Um, if you have other certifications, modalities, trainings, background, you can combine those and sort of the highest one always takes precedent. Um, so you can be wearing uh, different hats in your, in your coaching business, absolutely. But if you have done you know, a, a specific health coach training program, really get clear on your scope of practice and always refer out when it's out of scope. So if your client has questions that are for a medical doctor, are for a dietitian are for an addictions counselor, um, on, you know, for uh, uh, somebody who specializes in um, emotional eating or binge eating, those kinds of things. Um, any of those questions should go to those experts, right? So we want to direct our client to those types of experts, those types of authorities, if that's the kind of support they need. And of course, the internet is incredible. So uh, lots of information there where they can do their own research, do their own learning, and come to their own conclusions about a lot of these things. So definitely want to be referring out if questions that our clients are asking us really should be directed at another health professional. So um, I hope these reminders, these coaching principles that I shared with you today help to just get you into that coaching mind frame so that that can alleviate some of the fears and doubts about getting these questions because I think those will help um, eliminate or maybe minimize some of the questions that you get. And then I hope these practical tips are something that you can use in your own practice. Um, that, that one about asking uh, the questions in advance in the little prep email before your session was, was really the, the one that, that helped me the most. So I hope that's um, helpful for you. So if you have any questions about any of these reminders or tips that I shared today, I'd love for you to post them in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. And if you are not yet in my Facebook group, which is called uh, Coaching Skills for Health Coaches, I'd love for you to come over and join um, because I have daily posts um, about these topics around coaching skills and really there to support you in up-leveling your skills so you can be a competent and confident coach and go out there and do really great work as a coach. So thanks for tuning in today. Um, post your questions in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.